Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Yassel, and we have a very serious matter to discuss. Sort of. Principal Weems is absolute perfection. So let's just praise Gwendolyn Christie for like 15 minutes, okay? Quick backstory, I used to be a design intern at Michael Kors, and while I was there, we had this huge inter-office sample sale. One of the things I actually ended up grabbing at this sale was this book right here. Now I've actually used this book in the past for work. I love that years later, I finally have an excuse to just like pull it out and use it for a video. Get ready. Let me just say right away, I absolutely love all of the praise that Wednesday is getting, especially Jenna Ortega as the titular character. I am in awe of her. She did the most amazing job. I am loving all of the Wednesday dance videos. She has forever cemented herself as an icon for that dance. And it's gonna be the next big line dance, I feel. Like we're all just gonna end up doing the Wednesday dance at weddings. I love the Latina representation, obviously. Huge fan of that, can't get enough. I'm loving all of the goth <laughs> fashion and beauty that I'm seeing on social media. And I loved all of the fashion and beauty on the show. I'm really looking forward to all of the <laughs> special makeup collections that are going to arise from this show. I'm already envisioning a half Wednesday, half Enid eyeshadow palette. I'm calling it now, that's gonna happen or they're getting individual eyeshadow palettes. The Bianca Barclay Siren palette absolutely needs to happen because hello, the Ren look, hello, the Poe cup look. Some of the just the greatest beauty I've seen on television in ages. Those eye looks are so fierce. And while I'm loving all of the conversation around the younger characters, and they totally deserve it because they're amazing, I'm actually really shocked at the lack of conversation around the fact that Gwendolyn Christie, as one principal Larissa Weems, is incredible. She is giving us classic old Hollywood beauty and is out here being the modern day Hitchcock blonde that we never knew we needed. I mean, the fact that she absolutely Eat. in every scene and left no crumbs for anyone, literally uh, no, 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 uh, mm, none for anybody. Why isn't that dominating the discourse? Gen Z, I can understand just wanting to talk about younger characters. The older generation do better social media. I'm not seeing it. And so I have come, I am here now to right this wrong and praise our queen Gwendolyn Christie. Gwendolyn Tracy Philippa Christie, who told you that you could come out here and out Hedron, Tippy Hedron and out Novak, Kim Novak. How dare you? So for the role of Principal Larissa Weems, Gwendolyn Christie appears simultaneously as the quintessential Hitchcock blonde and at the same time, a subversion of that character. So what do I mean? Tim Burton actually let Gwendolyn Christie come up with the design of her own character and bless. She actually worked with Oscar winning costume designer, Colleen Atwood to come up with this look. Gwendolyn Christie, Colleen Atwood and Tim Burton all actually had the same general idea to go in this direction. And we are grateful. Colleen Atwood is probably worthy of her own video. I feel like in the future, I might need to just do a video on her because anytime Tim Burton or Rob Marshall has a film coming out, there she is. Is she the Edith Head of this generation? I feel like that might be something worth talking about. Maybe I'll do a in praise of Colleen Atwood and pointing out some, some places and times where she could have done better. But this is not one of those because she excelled here, okay? So for this role, they specifically looked at two people. They looked at, again, the aforementioned Tippi Hedren and Kim Novak. Gwendolyn Christie has previously mentioned that she actually watched all their old films so that she could learn how to 
carry herself. She studied their mannerisms and learned how they moved in preparation for this role. And all of that studying, along with the fabulous costume design, down to the earrings, y'all, okay? The earrings down to the earrings, along with the equally important, especially for a Hitchcock blonde, the hair and makeup, we really need to give credit to the work that went into the hair especially. So costume, hair, and makeup all work together with Gwendolyn Christie delivering, giving it her all, and living her best life on screen for the rest of us to enjoy. <laughs> the end result was perfection. By the way, can we also talk about the fact i just want to mention for those of you who've seen it and are aware sorry if this is like a bit of a spoiler for anyone who hasn't watched it it may not be a big deal to society at large <laughs> but to me i thought this was amazing so in the school talent show when she performs with morticia i love the fact that instead of just mimicking Judy Garland that because she's a literal shapeshifter she just became Judy Garland. We stand a shapeshifting outcast icon that transformed herself into a legend. Thank you. Now what do I mean by subversion of the role? Gwendolyn Christie actually refers to the fact that while she liked the look she didn't want to be like these blondes of Hitchcock films past because she wanted more control. It was less about things happening to her as some kind of damsel in distress than her taking control of things and making things happen. She was, as always, a complete badass. But this time, there was something a little more. Gwendolyn Christie is known for always taking on these roles ever since we saw her as the Brienne of Tarth in Game of Thrones. She always takes on these roles where she's just a badass like that's she just kicks ass and takes names and we love her for it side note she was absolutely wasted in star wars and we need more captain phasma because what the hell was that like are we getting a prequel are you listening to me but more more of her doing things this time around we're actually seeing gwendolyn christie on camera wearing makeup she says this was the first time she was basically allowed to wear makeup on screen. And therefore, the first time that she ever felt beautiful in a role. And we need more of that, of her being beautiful and feeling herself. One of the reasons that I feel that her performance was absolutely amazing on this show is because she loved it and we felt that. She felt beautiful and we felt that through the screen. She was absolutely feeling herself and we were feeling her feel herself. Okay, I had to pause to make more space on my phone and mattify my face, but I'm back now. Where was I? Okay, yes. I feel that Gwendolyn Christie was so successful in this role that we need to give her more roles just like that. More opportunities for her to be both beautiful and a badass. And I think watching her on screen, there was one role in particular that immediately came to mind to those of us in the know. I think the scene where she was smiling as the not blood rained down on her <laughs> immediately solidified the fact that she is Lady Dimitrescu. There, I said it, we were all thinking it. Most of us, mostly all of us. She's got the height, almost. The height is there, the beauty is there. Let's make this happen, let's collectively manifest this for our queen. Did I feel the need for a live action Resident Evil Village before? No. Not at all. Do I feel like it absolutely needs to happen now? Absolutely. So what goes into making a Hitchcock blonde anyway? What makes them so iconic? Quite a bit, it turns out. <clears throat> Rather than house proud housewives, he preferred his women to be altogether unforgettable and irresistible. For Mr. Hitchcock overlooked no detail. Because he could not undress them, he arranged their hair and decked them out splendidly. In other words, with discreet elegance. This book also mentions achieving this sort of follow me young man look created by the fashion designers of those respectable years when a woman never appeared without hat and gloves. 
The Hitchcock ladies all wear gloves when they sally forth into the world. The nape of the neck was the only piece of skin lined by the kind of hairiness that it was permissible to show. Hitchcock had to do without everything else, but he wasn't going to do without this. Short hair, bare necks and shoulders, very important, the bare shoulders, to highlight the frailty of the neck. And above all, chignons. When we peruse Sir Alfred's 53 movies, we understand the importance of seeing the names of these ladies' hairdressers included in the credits. And indeed, there are so many amazing photos in this book, including just a look at all of the hairstyles. And the book goes on to talk about the importance of this sort of the architectural chignon, the art of this fabulous stylized updo. And again, we see those all the time on Principal Weems. We get the shots of her from the back where we can see the effort that went into the hairstyle. That again is by design because it is one of those things that makes the Hitchcock blonde. The makeup, simple, clean, classic 50s, 60s. These movies in particular were late 50s, early 60s. To me, her look is a little more 50s because of the choice to have a bold red lip. Whereas if you see Kim Novak and Tippi Hedren in these films, much like the trend at the time in the 60s, the lip was more of a peachy pink, a little paler. Still, there are many women in the 60s who continue to follow that trend of matching the lip to the nail polish. So we have the lip, we have the matte face, light blush, defined brow. I personally aspire to have the thickest Liz Taylor eyebrows ever. I know Rachel Maxey did a video recently trying on different brow styles and that was not one of her favorites, but I live for <laughs> an arched brow. I love a thick arched brow. That's, that's me. That is my personal brow goal. Lined eyes, false lashes, perfection. I would have loved to have gotten at least one scene where she had a little bit of color on the lid, maybe like a daytime smoky eye or a blue or something. But again, she was already perfect and she didn't need it. That's just me. If I had to be like nitpicky about anything, I just would have liked to see it one like evening look or something where there was a little more color on the eye. And if you stick around this channel long enough, I will actually walk you through tutorials on how to achieve this look. I would have done it today, but honestly, my place is a mess uh, and I need to get it together, but I will soon. Talk about trauma being exacted upon them. Real, real talk. For those of you who may not be aware, Hitchcock was actually kind of awful. Like trauma being enacted upon these women, that was, wasn't just acting, it was actually real life for some of them. Most notably, Tippi Hedren in The Birds. He would make sexual advances, she wasn't feeling it, she wanted to get out of her contract, he wouldn't let her. In the worst example of this, after Tippi Hedren initially shot Hitchcock down, he got so petty and mean and vindictive that they went ahead and filmed her death scene for that movie, right? But then when she went to film the scene, he actually replaced the planned mechanical birds with actual birds and did not tell her. The funniest part is that there was actually a representative from the SPCA <laughs> to make sure that the birds were okay. You know, while they were pecking at and scratching this woman and she was just laying there and taking it. He basically went on to like ruin her career. How would you describe the darker side? Uh, well, the dark evil. What did he say to you? He said, I'll ruin your career. Wow. I said, do what you have to do and I, out the door I went. And did he ruin your career? Yes, he did. She had a contract with him and she wanted out and he wouldn't let her out. But also, if he couldn't have her, nobody else will. So he wouldn't let her out of her contract and allow her to make movies with other studios, even though she didn't want to make movies with him. And he was like, fine, then don't. But I'm not letting you out of this contract. He sucked. Like, like he was the worst. So we definitely don't need more of that. But this subverted 
fabulous modern day Hitchcock heroine? Absolutely. Speaking of the birds, just a quick note. Fashion loves that movie, but no one has worn it better, in my opinion, than Gwendolyn Christie as Principal Larissa Weems. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, share your thoughts and feelings with me, and please share this video. Because if you are like me and you're like, where, where is the praise for our queen? We need more of it. Share this video with your friends and let them know that they are not alone.